accordingly. Uh, our administration asked me, I just told them that we would we would be okay with whatever they decided. And it's my understanding that they wanted to play. So Leonard, that, that was a conversation between you and Mike? And no, we talked I didn't have, he was in his locker room. I was in my locker room. That was a, com a conversation that I didn't have a conversation with them. The administration told me that he was talking to his team about whether or not they wanted to play. And I told them whatever decision he made was fine with me. Coach, you've seen a lot of things in your career. I mean, and as long as you've been coaching, what was that like? I mean, to see a young man on the court like that collapsing. Well, I did not see what happened, but I, I, it had a really dramatic effect on my team. Uh, matter of fact, it was, several of my players were crying, um, and I wasn't real sure that that. Um, some, a couple of them were emotional to the point where I was unsure how effective they would be uh, in the game. So it was uh, uh, different. Uh, I've been involved with several kids who had, you know, injuries like that, but not one that was beginning a halftime that was not a collision or something that was obvious. It was just a mystery to us because we didn't know exactly what was going on, but those types of things uh, can can affect you in in, in some some uh, adverse ways. I, I'm, 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 we're just all hopeful and praying that he's okay. So Leonard, I can imagine if if it affected our players in an emotional way, I can imagine what what the situation was with his teammates. Yeah, that was what I was going to ask, sir. Sorry if I interrupted you. I mean, what impact do you think it did have on them? I mean, they were playing well and kind of the, I mean, that, that was a rough situation for the I, game. I think, I think we were up at 10 at halftime, I believe. And uh, so that, that when the games, when you're only up 10, you know, games can go either way. So what did you think about uh, Scotty Barnes' performance tonight? Well, there's no doubt that he showed potential, but as, as a, a team, I mean, he's showing that he has the ability that we always knew he had. Um, he made pretty good decisions with the ball and he did some athletic things. But as a team, we have to get a little bit better all on the same page so that we can all be a little bit better in sync than I thought we were tonight. I mean, he was effective individually, and I thought we had some individual guys that stepped up and made some good plays. But if we're going to be a, a really, really good team this year, we, we got to grow to be a little bit more in sync. And there was a lot of indecision uh, going on on the court. People are not real sure of themselves. And um, that, that concerns me. Individually, Scotty, as well as some of the other guys, I think we have some individual physical talent. But I think we got to still keep working to, to come a little – closer together as a team so we can be a, uh, a team that 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 de develops a system that uh, that we will allow them to play out of. Leonard, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier that you've had situations uh, with players with these type of injuries. Have you ever actually seen one of your players, either as a head coach or assistant coach, actually collapse on a basketball court? No, I have not. I have not experienced uh, that you know we've had guys maybe might you know have um, have uh, concussions that um, I've had several players play with have um, have have contact collisions and they have concussions where you know they, they were not thinking clear and were a little dizzy with, with headaches um, we had to have balsa uh, this past week go through all the concussion protocols because he got hit in the head in, in the Indiana game. But I've, I've never been involved with one where a, a player collapsed like that. As, as a follow-up coach, could you talk about your own emotions after that happens? If you see your players reacting emotionally, were you trying to be conscious of 
just trying to main, maintain calm and not like uh, make it worse for them by showing emotion yourself? Well, I, I try. I think if you if you know anything about me, I try to stay even keel all the time. You know, I try even if I'm really feeling anxiety and I am emotional. I try not to um, allow that to be able to affect the players. Um, what I wanted to do is worry about that which we can control. Um, we didn't know exactly what happened. Uh, we, we knew that he was affected, uh, that, that there was a situation that we didn't quite have all the inf any information on. And I, what I told our guys that, that we, we just need to pray for him and, and hope that everything's worked out all right. And, and then immediately I had several players that got on their knees and started praying. Uh, while we were there in the huddle. Uh, and I just thought that was a, a very thoughtful thing that our players were in the huddle praying that the opponent uh, uh, would recover in, in a good way. And that just shows a lot about the character and the compassion of the guys on our team. Leonard, how pleasing has it been to see MJ be as assertive as he has been through three games? He got to the line today, knocked down all 12 free throws, finishes with 17 and I think he played again a team leading like 29 minutes. Well, M MJ, is a, he's been through the battles. Um, I think he expects a lot of himself. He's embracing um, the leadership role that, that has been thrown on him. Um, I'm sure he would like for us to be a little bit more in sync from an execution standpoint. But um, that's where we are right now. You know, that's who we are, uh, and um, everybody's making adjustments. Uh, Raquan Gray is making an adjustment now. His role has changed significantly, along with Anthony Polite and uh, Balsa. Um, there's no question. Then you have a, a, a freshman point guard that's moving from a power forward position to a point guard position. He's learning how to uh, affect the game and learn how to facilitate. You know, we have a lot of things going on, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of interesting developments going on with our team. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying my best to learn as much as I can, uh, playing against some very, very stiff competition. Uh, I find myself sometimes trying to get guys minutes just to gain some experience. Sometimes it's a, and it's a de delicate balance. It's how you get guys experience and how you make sure you win the game when you have guys who are still growing and developing. So it's just right now we just in a, in a, in a position where we try to do both at the same time. I'm just hoping that uh, that we can continue to keep winning while we're growing and developing. But I thought Scotty and uh, White well, may have a good moment or two and Sadar came in and Tanar came in. Uh, I'm, I'm – Blended in with the experienced players that we have that are returning, but I still want to emphasize the point that I don't think we we're close to being our potential. We're just still working on trying to get in a consistent groove with our system, offensively as well as defensively. Leonard, how how pleased are you with? Uh, it seemed like well, there were three times today where your guys attacked the basket and dunked over people. Um, like probably maybe like you did back in the day. How pleased are you with the way um, they're taking it strong to the goal, no matter if there's a defender or not? And do they still have room to grow in that area, some of the other players? We have plenty of room. We, 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 there <laughs> now, I have to admit, we have been emphasizing being much more aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. That is something that we're emphasizing with our guys. But it all works together. When I'm in, in a perfect world, we will, we will execute our offense, and then we will make – the right decisions that now instead of moving the ball, I got to recognize I can attack the basket or I can turn down the ball screen. But right now we have to emphasize driving, then they drive. We emphasize moving the ball and make an extra pass, then they do that. We need to, we need to be able to run our system and be able to recognize all those things at the same time. You know, when, when, a, when a post guy slips, we need to hit him immediately. If, if, if a big guy's rotating in, he got to kick it out. 
those things we are still sputtering and doing. That's why when you talk, ask me about individual performances, I recognize that that, that is, that's a step in the right direction. But I know in order for us to, to play against the competition, I know we're going to be facing once we're in the conference play, we got to bring all that together. So I'm, I'm not really ready to start celebrating individual uh, performances as much as I am trying to see can we get our whole system offensively and defensively sounder so, uh, the, so that I can predict how effective we can be once we get into the thick of our schedule. All right, Coach, can you talk about the three-point shot? Uh, it seems like it was really an equalizer in the ability to come back. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we like the other night against Indiana, we didn't shoot the ball very well for the, for the, for the three, and we didn't hit our free throws very well. They were shot 52% from the free throw line. That's why I keep saying we are work in progress. I'm, I'm not going to get overly excited that we shot 50, what we shoot something from three. It's like I'm, I just know that I got to have some consistency with this so then I can gauge where we are. You know, when you up, when you're inconsistent, when you have one game you shoot well, and one game you don't, that concerns me as a coach. We show the potential that if we move the ball well, set ball screens, penetrate and get kickouts, we're going to get some of those three-point shots. The other night, we didn't get those what you call uh, rhythm jump shots because the ball was not moving nearly as well. The night we had moments where the ball moved when we got those shots, but we were not consistent with that level of execution offensively, you know, to be consistent with it through the whole game. Leonard, after the game, you know, you beat your rival for the seventh straight time. You have uh, um, your 3 and 0 now. Was it a normal locker room celebration? No. It was a celebration where we identified the areas where we need to improve them. <clears throat> no one has gone to the NCAA tournament 3 and 0. No one has won a championship being 3 and 0, 3 and 0. You know, and we going the competition is going to get tougher and more aggressive. Our, our opponents who in our conference will be much more prepared. They won't have a, their best player uh, have something unfortunate happening in the second half. So in order to uh, prepare for that with the new addition of the Seminole basketball team, I got to have, a, I, I got to be able to anticipate and look to the future as to where we have to be uh, in order to be effective. And right now, I think we're a work in progress. I'm excited. I'm happy that we won, but I've still got to address the errors of my games where I know they need to get in, get better. Any more questions for Coach? Thank you, guys. We appreciate your time.